What determines if we're going to get rain, snow, or even a wintry mix? First warning meteorologist Lena Chikowski is giving us answers about the variables that lead to the weather we get. Here in Western Mass, our average first accumulating winter snowfall typically occurs in late November. But this year, we got that well ahead of schedule just before Halloween in October. However, snow is not the only type of precipitation we have to worry about in the winter months. Rain occurs when the entire column of air from cloud to ground is above 32 degrees Fahrenheit, while snow occurs when the entire column of air is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. But what about the in-betweens? Freezing rain and sleet are commonly confused for one another, but there are differences between the two. Think of little ice pellets bouncing off your car windshield. That's sleet. Sleet is also sometimes thought to be hail. While sleet occurs in the winter months, hail occurs during the warm season and is often associated with severe weather events such as thunderstorms. So what's the difference between freezing rain and sleet anyway? The first layer of the atmosphere where all weather occurs is called the troposphere. And typically in the troposphere, temperature decreases with height. So most precipitation actually begins in the form of ice crystals within a cloud, especially in the colder months of winter. A column filled with warm air to the surface results in rain. Sometimes there's a shallow layer of cold air just above the surface or the ground is frozen. So precipitation that's falling as rain through a deep warm layer of air above freezes on contact with the cold ground. This results in a thin film of ice resulting in freezing rain. Sleet falls through a thin warm layer and melts partially but refreezes when the cold layer at the surface is deeper. And last but not least, when no warm air is present, we get snow. Any type of precipitation occurring within the winter months can lead to slippery road conditions. But black ice is particularly dangerous because it's hard to detect. While it's not actually black in color, it's referred to as black ice because it's so thin that it's virtually invisible on paved roads. Therefore, you typically don't see it until it's too late. Extra caution while driving or walking outdoors is important when conditions for black ice are present, including daytime or evening rain leading into colder nights where refreezing may occur. Now, sometimes snow is light and fluffy and sometimes it's heavy and wet. What gives? Temperature. Wet snow occurs right at 32 degrees while normal snow occurs around 30 degrees and fluffy snow occurs at 25 degrees or below. The lower the temperature drops, the lighter and fluffier the snow becomes. The ratio stands for snow versus water equivalent. So for every inch of water you have, you get 5 inches of wet snow, 10 inches of normal snow, and 15 inches of light fluffy snow dependent on the temperature. This is why heavy wet snow can be particularly problematic and damaging, causing down tree limbs and power outages. Although it's less measurable accumulation, the weight bearing stress can often exceed thresholds. While it's important to clear the roof of your house often during the winter, it's crucial during heavy wet snow events, especially when accumulation occurs in larger quantities. What about lake effect snow? Water has a higher heat capacity than land, so it's often warmer than land during the winter months. When cold air passes over warmer, unfrozen lake waters, it picks up a substantial amount of moisture. As the heat and moisture are transferred to the atmosphere, clouds grow bigger and snow begins to fall. Heavy snow bands then form downwind of the lake as a result of the increased moisture. And voila, the result is a winter wonderland. For Western Mass News, I'm First Warning Meteorologist Lena Joukowsky.